Hey guys, welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we're going to be showcasing four data packs, not five, because these ones are kind of big ones. So I thought I would showcase four instead, just so we don't make this video way too long. Now, two of them are quite big, and two of them are just small ones, because just showing off two is going to be kind of boring. But these two do change the game quite a bit. So let's cover the first one. Now, before we cover the first one, once again, the links will be in the description in the order I showcase them. So make sure to check them out. So the first thing we are doing is this data pack. You can see already before we head, there is a lot of changes. And this data pack basically revamps the whole of the end. I really do like these floating heads. They don't seem to do anything. They're just transparent or invisible. And they just rotate around, which is really cool. So let's head inside of the end. And you'll see the end has had a complete overhaul. There is a lot more here. Now, due to this being a data pack, there isn't any new blocks. Every block that is used within this is from the vanilla game. Now, the end is themed more around the moon. That's the sort of vibe I get. There is obviously still the towers with some crying obsidian scattered throughout them. Then in the center, there is a big massive obsidian platform with the center portal and also a chest. The chest does have some loot inside, which is pretty good. And is this completely hollow? It is. So there's nothing hidden inside of this tower. And by the looks of it, some of the towers have also been altered. So I don't exactly know how to fight this dragon. I don't think it's the same. But that's something you'll have to download the data pack and test out for yourself. As I'm not going to spawn a dragon or anything like that. But not only has the start of island been completely revamped. So has the outer end. And oh, there's skulk in the outer end. Okay, there's a load of skulk over there. This does also look like it's been, yeah, oh, this is really cool. It does fill the end up a lot more. And once again, due to it being a data pack and not a mod, there are no new blocks. This is built with complete vanilla resources. If you want your end to feel a lot more filled up, then definitely do give this data pack a go, as it definitely does do that. But the only thing is, it will make getting the resources a lot easier. Because, for example, this biome we have found right here, every tree is using, like, concrete and wall. Also, end cities have been overhauled within this as well. You can see they have had a lot of blocks changed. It does also add a load of new end biomes. This is one of them. It's a load of basalt with then some amethyst. So it does make getting amethyst a lot easier as well. I just like this data pack. It makes the end feel new and refreshed without having to have a mod. There is also this biome. Oh, what is this called? This is the crisp. No, this is the frosted hills. I like this. This is really cool. The way there's ice and everything over here. Because if you didn't know, the end is actually classed as a cold biome. If you spawn a frog here, it will spawn the cold variant. So this ice and snow does kind of make sense. There are also some dungeons you can find within this data pack that are silverfish with then some loot. These just represent the normal like zombie dungeons in the overworld, but for the end. The second data pack is one of the small ones and we'll jump to the big ones at the start and the end. So this second data pack we're going to showcase is one that makes harvesting crops a lot easier. So if you have a fully grown crop, instead of having to break it and replant it, all you have to do now is right click and you can see it gives you the crop and the seeds, but the crop stays planted, meaning that you don't have to plant and replant crops every single time. Now this only works on fully grown ones, so you can see I am clicking these ones and nothing is happening. So this data pack just makes farming crops a lot easier because it saves time as well. You don't have to mine every crop and then replant them as well. The third data pack is one that makes change to the birch forest, but this is the ordinary birch forest and it makes the tall growth birch forest a lot different. So you can tell the difference between the two. Now this is themed off the concept art that was released around Minecraft 1.19 for the birch forest. It just spawns with a new grass colour, a load of birch trees with some glow lichen on, the pitcher plant also does spawn here 
with then some other flowers and some other bits as well. If we travel through, you can see there's patches in the ground with some like rooted dirt. If we head through, you can see there's a lot more blocks that spawn. Also, I thought this was a trail ruins, but it doesn't seem like it is. It seems like it's just a patch of blue terracotta. If we fly up into the sky and just have a look over it, you can see there's quite a lot of like blocks that are scattered around. We've got some normal blue terracotta over there. We have some more rooted dirt. And in the sky, there are also some frog lights with some hanging lanterns, which I think is a cool addition. There is also some candles on the floor. So this date pack just makes the birch forest, or at least the old growth birch forest, it makes it feel a lot different to the normal one, rather than just taller birch trees. And not gonna lie, it does look a lot better. So the final data pack we are gonna cover is the Bracken. I have had so many suggestions to cover this data pack, and it's one that adds like 11 different dimensions. And the reason I've decided to cover it now is because it had a huge update at the beginning of March, which adds a lot of new content. We're currently in the underworld, which you can get to by flying like very deep in the overworld. I think to like the bedrock layer in the overworld, you can then get to this dimension, which is a underneath of the overworld with a lot bigger caves and also a lot more cave biome types. Now it's going to be pretty difficult to cover everything within this data pack because there is so much. The amount of content and different gameplay elements that have been added, especially for a data pack, is insane. So we're now traveling to another one, which is Venture Deep when you arrive in the Sanctum. So let's head down. Uh, let's go here. So this is the bottom of the Never. I'm not too sure what this one is like. Okay. Uh, I think that's a structure going off of just how big it is. Yeah, this is like a maze structure. Okay, that's really cool. So this one is like the underneath of the never, I guess, because you have to travel down to get to it. Okay, that is really cool. Does that affect the player if you go inside of it? Let's have a look. Why am I invisible? I don't know why I'm invisible. Maybe that's some spectator thing. So, oh, it does. It gives you, like, jump boost. So just exploring this dimension a little bit, it seems like the majority of it is this, like, white concrete powder with some scattered bones. There is also another biome up here or structure. I don't know if this is a biome or structure. It looks more like a structure. And then over here, there is whatever this is. This looks incredible. It looks like a hand coming out of the... Is it meant to be a hand? I think it might be. But it looks like a hand like coming out of the ground. And then we have a new biome right here. Which, once again, it does look really cool. This data pack does also require a resource pack to enable a lot of custom items. As it does also add a load of tools and things like that. But I'm not going to cover everything because it would take absolutely ages to cover absolutely everything within this data pack. And by going to the bottom of this dimension, it's teleporting us to another biome, which, or another dimension, not biome. And I don't exactly know what this dimension we're going to is. So this one says nothing here. We are apparently within the void. I don't know where we are though, because it is completely black. So is there anything within this dimension? Let's maybe give ourselves night vision just for the video. Okay, we are unable to give myself night vision. So yeah, I, okay. So we got teleported out of the void into this obsidian box, which is in the middle of an ocean. Are we back in the overworld? No, we don't seem to be. Where are we? I don't know if we can see dimension on this screen, although I don't know where to look. No, we are. We are in the brine. I have no clue what this is, but I really do like the look of this one as well. But anyway, that is it for this video. Once again, it'll be hard to showcase every single thing within this data pack because there is so much. And the reason I'm covering it now is because there was a big update at the beginning of March, which added so many new things. So once again, all the data packs I showcase will be linked in the description. Check them out and let me know, did you guys enjoy where I showcased bigger data packs rather than small, miny tweak ones? Let me know in the future, would you like to see bigger data packs like this one or do you like it when I just showcase the smaller data packs? But anyway, if you enjoyed, do leave a like and subscribe, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!